Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Johnny Mack with your daily comedy news. One of the most interesting lists that comes out every year is from Vulture. It is the Comedians You Should and Will Know list. This year it is 2024's Comedians You Should and Will Know list. Two dozen of tomorrow's stand-up sketch and online comedy superstars, according to industry insiders. Now, just out of curiosity, let's look at uh, 2023's list to see how good they do. All right, so from 2023, Fumi Abe, that was a good call. He had a good year. Brian Bahe had a good year. Ralph Barbosa, for sure. Charlie Bardley and Natalie rotter Leitman, still not sure who they are. All right, three and one. Sophie Buttle, sure, four and one. Curtis Cook, Katrina Davis, Stavros Halki has had a monster year. Rob Hayes, this is the 23 list. Jordan Jensen, Andrea Jin, Rachel Cayley, Eddie Modica, Opie Alagbaju, Nimesh Patel had a pretty good year, Richard Perez, Jordan Temple, Asha Ward, August White, Maggie Winters, Sabrina Wu cut through, Zach Zimmerman cut through, Sophie Zucker kind of cut through, Zach Zucker. So, all right, from last year, I don't know, seven or eight, that a ballpark how we're going to do here. Walter writes, the comedy industry is undergoing a metamorphosis in 2024. Name brand comedy venues are opening new locations. Local venues are being bought out by mega corporations and streaming service home comedy festivals are usurping the old fashioned ones. With so much going on, the matmosphere is sure to be rife with hacks and phonies, but it's also full of undiscovered treasures. So to hell with the algorithm. Let's do Vulture's 11th annual roundup of comedians you should and will know. After polling more than 100 industry insiders, including TV execs from streaming and linear TV, bookers for clubs, artistic directors from comedy theaters, indie comedy producers, podcast network heads, top brass at animation studios, terrestrial radio chiefs, comedy record label execs, comedy festival programmers, comedy historians, live show photographers, and performers featured on last year's list, they were left with a pool of more than 200 comedians. From there, Vulture had to grapple with some questions, which names came up over and over again. Who stood out from the crowd work? Who's on the rise to stardom? And who will be the masterminds of our future favorite TV shows and stand-up specials? In alphabetical order by surname, Sabrina Breyer. Vulture tells us Sabrina Breyer's face can turn the most unremarkable life experience into a meme. In case in point, the way her eyes bug out and she juts her body forward like a blonde Dilophosaurus. When she says her Memorial Day weekend was amazing, except for her raging UTI. It's not just the relatability of her behavioral observations that helps this persona connect with her massive online audience. It's the palpable way she revels in the squirmy grotesquerie. There are entire cringe compilations of her uttering the single syllable O. Oh. Number two, Sam Campbell. Sam's been buzzing. You've heard me mention Sam over the years here, especially when we talk about the international festivals, Vulture writes, and Sam Campbell's 2022 solo show, Comedy Show, winner of the prestigious Best Comedy Show Award at Fringe. The comedian introduced his brand of comic absurdism to the audience with the tongue-in-cheek one-liner, My mind is a prison full of crazy ideas, and I think there's going to be a jailbreak. As Campbell has matured as a performer, he's grown more adept at translating his style for mainstream audiences. Campbell's eccentricities are palpable but never alienating. In one 2021 sketch, he plays a boyfriend meeting his girlfriend's discriminatory parents for the first time, but their instant dislike of him isn't rooted in religious or racial prejudice. They simply can't get past the fact that he's 30% transparent. Third up, Nico Carney. Once Nico gets to the part of his set where he reveals that he was a Division I athlete in college, everything clicks into place. Only years of early morning drills and after-school practice lead to stand-up that's this consistent, smooth, and fine-tuned to kill. Carney starts a set with an introduction to his trans identity. People are very curious about trans people. People ask me sometimes, how did you know? When did you know? And it happened to me the same way it happens to all of us. Caitlyn Jenner bit me. That's a great joke. <laughs> Number four, Aaron Chen. Some comedians stride on stage with a sense of grandiosity and expansiveness. Chen stands, blinks calmly, and waits for the audience to recalibrate to his measured pace. Chen says he took an Uber to the show. And the driver asked if Chen minded if he talked to a friend. Chen says, of course. And thank you for considering me a friend. (laughs) Now, what are we up to? Four, George Severus. George says, I can't believe I fell for orange wine for three years. It's because I have too much faith in food professionals because of my own progressive politics. Severus is a gay, glasses-wearing, cynical Greek man who in the stand-up world is wildly overeducated. Stanford, MIT alum, wow. As he put it to podcast co-host Sam Taggart, I'm default either bitchy, condescending, or rude. He imagines what it would be like to have a beautiful daughter who hates him. He describes attending progressive straight weddings. There's a cellist with blue hair, the bride is being walked down the aisle by a random lesbian, and the bride's dress is ripped to represent our broken justice system. That sounds really funny. 
Francesca Duva has the pop acumen of a Swedish hitmaker and the comedic sensibility of an entire 30 Rock writer's room. She could probably have a lucrative career writing five songs for an episode of Netflix reality shows. Instead, she creates the best musical comedy in Brooklyn, which is saying something in a borough that has more musical comedians per capita than doctors. A Mary Poppins on Poppers song about nannying. The lyrics, I am your nanny and I will be till I die. I'll never leave you. Even after I die, I'll be your ghost nanny. Finds her voicing a little cockney boy with a budding foot fetish. A song about wanting to play Joseph in the Catholic school kindergarten nativity play functions as an exploration of the way she struggled with being othered as a kid. But it also ends with another kid getting crushed by a cross and a pitch perfect Shakira impression. Uh, What do we have to number six here? Brandy Denise. Brandy's signature stand-up bit centers on her previous career as a social worker when she says she'd often get hit on by her clients. You gotta have a lot of confidence to hit on your social worker after the interview. You just told me you live in an underpass. You haven't had a job. You can't feed you. I know you can't feed me. Malik el how many comedians can say their journey into the performing arts began with their high school teacher attempting to pilot a theater program just to nurture their talents? Malik delivered book reports at his Islamic private school in Calgary with so much theatrical verb that one kind teacher was inspired to take up his cause. It wasn't long before the program was shut down by another teacher out of an abundance of religious precaution. He impersonates one such teacher with a flair for character work. It says, when you see the power of Allah on the day of judgment, brother, you will not be laughing. Continuing with Vulture's best new comedians at 2024 up to Roz Hernandez. Roz is loud and dignant and ready to entrap both spirits and audience members. In her stand-up, she leads audience members down a cliff by coaxing them into saying the other name for a water spritzer, which is Mr., then getting offended that they misgendered her. Part of the fun of Hernandez's act is how her joyfully exuberant style so directly contrasts her connection with the macabre. The classic Hernandez image is of her in a zebra print coat with a blue feather collar, recapping how a ghost ruined her hookup by turning the lights on when her makeup wasn't done. Those shady-ass ghosts said, sir, I want you to see what you've signed up for. That sounds fun and different. Roz Hernandez there. All right, Skylar Higley. I think we're up to number eight here, if I'm counting correctly. And I'm probably not. Higley grew up in Utah as a black child of white Mormon parents. This is, as Higley puts it on stage, half of what's wrong with him. He has a joke about being high on acid while riding public transportation and realizing a guy near him has his whole ass hanging out. I don't want to look at ass. I want to look at a beautiful sunset. I want to see a rainbow. But because I was tripping, I realized I'm not looking at ass. I'm looking at billions and billions of cells made up of billions and billions of atoms. That ass is amazing. That's good. (laughs) Chloe Hilliard reached six foot one by the age of 12. Her sense of humor stems from being the awkward big girl who had plenty of time to observe others. First day of high school, I walked into this. Shh, 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 the teacher's here. That's great. Another bit. LA's origin story is the gold rush. They were like, I'm going to be the one to find a nugget of gold and change my family's life forever. That's why today everyone in Los Angeles is delusional. Hilliard wrote for a black lady sketch show and wrote F Your Diet, which was awarded best comedy book in 2020. A Leslie Lau, what are we up to number 10 here or so? I'm trying to do 12. I realize I can't do 24 today. In her 2023 Netflix verified stand-up set, Leslie said, I'm 36 years old. I have a bedtime decisions to make. I don't have a night. You need to give me information that matters to me. All I need to see is your manhood, clean that up, and your paycheck. When I was younger, I used to be sad about being single. Now I'm angry. I feel like when I find him, I'm going to be like a mom whose kid got lost at the grocery store. Like, where you been? Get in the car. That was so embarrassing. Everybody was staring at me. Mandal, all caps, M-A-N-D-A-L. The Atlanta comedian possesses a rare Norm MacDonald-like quality, where his natural cadence, parlance, and body language make the journeys to his punchlines as rewarding as the punchlines themselves. All kinetic energy and a little giggles, he leans on animated stories and sprawling bits that build momentum as they unravel. Mendel's work caught the attention of John Mulaney, who had him open for Everybody's in L.A. That's interesting. He also opened for Mulaney at the Netflix is a Joke show at the Hollywood Bowl. And if I counted right, this is number 12, Gavin Matz who says, I'm not masculine, I'm just regular toxic. My toxicity has no masculinity. It's hard to articulate. He had a joke about police brutality that he did at the Comedy Cellar. It's hard to articulate that you're intellectually insecure when you're as dumb as hell. That's why I understand why police get so violent as soon as they step on a college campus. They're like, ah, everybody here reads? I gotta start hating somebody. (laughs) Older people will be like, there's two genders. How would you know that? You have six remotes. You have more remotes than there are genders? I don't think so. All right, that's 12 for today, or 11 or 13. You tell me, I didn't count. Uh, Maybe we'll continue this tomorrow, right? So that's your company news for today. If you enjoy the show, tell a friend about it, and we'll do something tomorrow. See you then.